This is the first part in a three-part series that runs the numbers on the supposed global flood of Noah. In this series we'll look at how much water was needed. We put that quantity into context and we look at the effects that that much water falling on the earth would have and how it all went away. And we do this all from a truly scientific standpoint, working out the maths and physics involved as we go along. For all of the facts and figures in this series I used Wikipedia, which I freely admit is not the most reliable reference source, but it is one of the most readily available. So if you want to check my figures and calculations to do the maths yourself and maybe take the points I raise in this series further, or just prove me wrong, then you can do. So let's make a start. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain on Earth and stands at 8,848 metres above sea level. That's 8.848 kilometres. Now, the surface of the Earth is calculated at 510 million 72,000 square kilometers. This includes the land and the oceans, and although that figure is probably not entirely accurate down to the last square meter, this figure is close enough for what we need it for. Now let's do some basic maths. Volume in this case equals area multiplied by depth, so 510,072,000 square kilometers multiplied by 8.848 kilometers will give us the volume of the floodwaters required to cover the earth higher than the highest peak. That gives us this figure. This figure is in cubic kilometers. That's right, 4,513,117,056 cubic kilometers. Now, all the surface water on the Earth, including the world's oceans, hold approximately 1,332,000,000 cubic kilometers of water, which accounts for around 80% of all water on Earth. And there are approximately 266,400,000 additional cubic kilometres of water locked up in the ice caps, underground, and walking around inside living creatures. Therefore, the amount of extra water on the surface of the Earth required to flood it to the height of Mount Everest is about 3.3 times the amount of surface water presently on Earth. So, where did all that extra water come from? Well, apparently it came from two sources, a vapour canopy up in the sky and from water deposits below the ground. In this series, we're going to look at the vapour canopy idea. The idea that all of this water was somehow just mulling around in a vapour somewhere up in the sky. Anyway, if only half of the water that was required was sat in a vapour cloud high above the Earth, that would mean that 2,256,558,528 cubic kilometres of water was sat up in the sky. Did you know that a cubic kilometre is equivalent to one billion cubic metres, and that one cubic metre is equivalent to one metric tonne? This would mean that the vapour cloud would weigh this amount. That's two quintillion, two hundred and fifty-six quadrillion, five hundred and fifty-eight trillion, five hundred and twenty-eight billion metric tonnes. Now, here is a fun fact for you. If you have two quintillion two hundred and fifty six quadrillion five hundred and fifty eight trillion five hundred and twenty eight billion metric tons of water pressing down on top of the Earth's atmosphere, then it is going to give you a pressure at sea level of about four thousand four hundred tons per square meter, which is six thousand two hundred and fifty eight pounds per square inch, or about forty three million one hundred and fifty thousand pascals. 
which is roughly equivalent to 430 bar or 426 times atmospheric pressure. I'm sure that you can see that Noah and his animals, as creatures that are used to living at a pressure of over 400 atmospheres, would have simultaneously asphyxiated, boiled and frozen from the lack of atmosphere, as all the atmospheric gases condensed into liquid or sublimed into solids due to the sudden pressure drop of going from 426 atmospheres to just one. We better hope that the Ark is a hyperbaric chamber. But let's continue. Now, this water in the vapour canopy was in the form of a vapour, hence the name of the canopy. The maximum water saturation of air at 30 degrees Celsius, 100% humidity, is 30 grams per cubic metre. Or if you do the maths, that works out at 3 100 thousandths of a cubic metre. Any more than this, and the water vapour will start to condense. Dense. Therefore, the minimum volume of our vapour canopy, if it contained just half of the water required to flood the earth, would be 75 sextillion, 218 quintillion, 617 quadrillion, and 600 trillion cubic metres, which is 75 trillion, 218 billion, 617 million, and 600,000 cubic kilometres. That is a volume over 69 times the volume of the Earth, or a cloud that is over 52,000 kilometers across, which is larger than the planet Neptune. Anyway, enough for now. In the next video we will put Noah under more pressure and look in a little more depth at just how much pressure a cloud that big would exert on our trusty naval zookeeper. In the meantime, if you'd like to do the maths yourself, please feel free. The maths is very, very simple indeed. The difficult part is getting your head round all the really, really, really big numbers. Somewhere.